Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, Attention and ADHD Coach Jeff Copper, and we're here today with ADHD Marriage Consultant Melissa Orlov. Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, Melissa's one of my favorites to interview on Attention Talk Video. She's got a lot of really good stuff for couples, and today we want to talk about uh, misinterpreted symptoms in ADHD in the relationship. Can you talk to us about that? You're giving me a funny face when you say that. <laughs> um, so, well, so yes. So one of the patterns that couples fall into that is very hurtful for them is that they don't understand the symptoms as they're expressed in the relationship and they get into these what I call symptom response response yep, yep. which is a negative downward spiral once you get into it um, but the two of the symptoms that are really very um, it's very important that you interpret properly are distractibility which is usually chronic for people yep, who have yep. ADHD and also um, having difficulty following through on things because both of these things translate very directly to partners who aren't thinking about them as symptoms into I don't love you yes. I don't care about you I don't want to be with you that that's it seems I'm really having a little bit of an aha right here because it really makes a lot of sense the relationship is really different like a personal intimate relationship very different from many other relationships and I can see how those particular symptoms could be misinterpreted as the connection side of some things and really can be misinterpreted and spiral out of control um, thinking that this person's distracted maybe they don't care they're whatever and it's personalized well and and there's also this just sort of huh what are you talking about I used to have this with my husband in fact one of the reasons I started writing about this was he was chronically distracted from me and my interpretation of that was well he had lost interest in me he didn't love me anymore and of course that felt very hurtful um, and and I would say to him you know don't you love me anymore and yep. he'd say what are you talking about of yep. course I love you well, you know and and I couldn't figure out how to fit those two things together yep. what I was experiencing and what he was saying um, and so it was very confusing and eventually I got very angry yep. and that's the kind of spiral people get into well once we learned about the ADHD then things changed I said oh wait that's a symptom of ADHD and I should believe him when he yep. says he loves me even though he's distracted yep. Um, and so then I could go to him and say, gee, you seem particularly distracted. I'm feeling kind of lonely. Yep. How about if we go out for a date? Yep. And, and that fixes that yep. up. Um, but the, the issue then is, so is, do I then put up with his being chronically distracted all the time? Because yep. that's still a dissatisfying yep. relationship for me, right? So I've, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I've done a lot of interviews with Dr. Russell Barkley talking about ADHD as a self-regulation issue, and impulsivity is about self-regulation. So in this, I can see how, the, in this case, your husband has got to self-regulate his distractibility to pay attention, but at the same time, now I can begin to see how the partner's got to actually self-regulate and pause and go, wait a second, this is, they really do love me, even though the behavior might look distracting. Can right. we speak to that for a second? Yes, absolutely. So, so in, uh, using myself as an example, I had to learn to say, that to myself, this little voice on my shoulder saying, it's not that he doesn't love you, you know, it's that he does love you, but he's distracted. And then figure out what am I going to do about that? Because what I ended up doing was saying, okay, I understand this is a symptom, but we still need time together. I still need to feel how much you love me. And there's just a certain bare minimum and above that I'd like to get in the relationship. So how do we Fit, how do we make that happen? And we did all sorts of things then to make that happen. And, and I talk about attend time yep. to my clients where you just have to have a certain amount of time together where you're focused on each other. And that can happen, but usually with yep. ADHD, you have to schedule it, yep. Yep. you have to think about it, and yep. you have to be okay with the fact that it isn't as spontaneous necessarily mm -hmm. as you'd like. And that's so that's a mindful thing that the non-ADD partner has to accommodate the yep. fact that this symptom is yep. here yet also still gets to have yep. the attention that he or she wants. And that's the important yeah. part. People think of accommodating ADHD as giving things up. And um, in fact, that's not the case. It's doing things differently yep. so that you still get what you need, but you accommodate the ADHD. Absolutely. So this, is, this is spectacular to me, and I find it fascinating. That, um, I've said this before with Melissa on some interviews, is this is a process that you need to work through because you have to kind of pause and uh, override kind of that automatic behavior. And uh, you've got a lot of tips and you're great at helping couples work through that. Oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> she lived it. She knows it. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk video. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, we have a tip coming out every week. And you actually can subscribe to our playlist because we have a lot of great stuff with Melissa. So take care.